Just doing a damn thing with my Rodecaster Pro, y'all. I am digging it. I am loving my Rodecaster Pro. I hope you guys are loving the sound. This sound is so damn crisp and so damn clean. I am I am enjoying myself while while using this little device, man. And I am glad that I made the the investment in this little item. Crazy, right? Crazy, right? The Rodecaster Pro. Give it up for the Rodecaster Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Rodecaster Pro. Rodecaster Pro. Yeah. What's up, guys? Lockout men in the truck on the 34. This podcast for today. Today is Sunday. I know I have not came out with a podcast in a while, but I've been doing the damn thing. I've been driving, but I got bank. I got bank. I could just go to my I can go to my YouTube studio and 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 just pop up a video. I mean, I got plenty of videos now. Whoops, wrong button. I got plenty of videos. I got plenty of videos and I got plenty of interviews coming up. I got a uh, Mother Truck and Mom coming up. I got KJ coming up. I got Nail coming up. Man, I got Let's see. Let's see. I got Bernadette coming up. Corey coming up. Uh, let's see. I, I I got a lot. I got a lot coming up. Yo, I'm hoping you guys enjoying the new format and the interviews. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with your boy, let me know. I am all about you. You know what I'm saying? If you have a story to tell or anything like that, yo, this, this is some topics of of what I'm looking for, all right? This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an old school driver that's been driving in the 80s, you know what I'm saying? I want him to come on and chop it up with me and let me know what life as a truck driver back in the 80s was like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the technology that they had then versus the technology that we had now. I want you, if you or somebody you know that has that drove back in the 80s and have a good story to tell tell them to hit me up at lockout men podcast at gmail.com and i would love to get their story on the air yo this this is who else i'm looking for this is what else i'm looking for i'm looking for of course i'm looking for all female drivers period period all right Whatever you is, if you're a truck driver mom, truck driver, if you're a female flatbedder, female tanker, female whatever, you know what I'm saying? Come on, especially if you're a new driver. Let me let me spotlight you. Let me get you out there. Let me find let let's find out what was your experience like when you when you was in training. Um what you went through. Hit me up at lockout men podcast at gmail.com. Also, also, I am looking for, I don't know, I'm, I'm looking for felons. Yo, if you, you know, if you was, a, if, if, if you were a felon and you just now getting into the trucking game and you want to come in and share your experience on how other felons can follow in your footsteps to getting that second chance, let me know. I'm hollering at you. Get at me. Gmail.com. I mean, G, uh, Gmail. Uh, Lockout Men Podcast at Gmail.com. All right? Get at me. Those are, the, those are the three topics or three things that I'm looking for. But if, you, any, if, if any of you out there that wants to come on and share your experience with me, definitely come on. I really do appreciate it. I'll share it with you. I'll get it out there to the world. Um. <clears throat> If you're a recruiter for any company, any company, all right, because we don't BS over here. If you're a recruiter for any company and you want to get your company out there, uh, whether you're an independent recruiter or you're a company recruiter, get at me. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Yo, let's get into this uh, podcast right quick, man. This uh, this responding to comments not not uh not comments uh of another youtuber because i love doing that uh actually i got 
I got a couple of those coming. I think when I I think when I stop again later on this evening, I'm going to do a video on that. But right now, this is responding to some of the Facebook comments because you know I'm in the I'm in the Facebook group, and um, I'm in Facebook groups, a lot of groups, and a lot of a lot of you guys come through Facebook. And and you got questions now. Some of the questions can legitimately be answered by some people in a group, but then you got other knuckleheads in there that just that just want to be a knucklehead about it. Me, I, I I see your question. I think it's valid, and if I can, and I I think I can answer it for you. So hopefully, the answer that I give you will work for you. If not, you can continue to you know search for the answers that you're looking for let's start off with the first question or comment per se adrian what's that adrian aid adrian okay adrian i seriously need to go back over the road but thanks to prime inc other companies will not give me the chance. Yes, I made some mistakes. Yes, I regret them. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes from time to time. Have over a year of a driving experience. Nine months flatbed with Prime Inc. One month flatbed with Western Express. Seven months drive-in with Laser Spot. Uh, that's where he's currently working at. Prefer flatbed. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. You you prefer to go back over the world, but what's the matter with uh what's the matter with yard jockey, bro? I mean, if I had the opportunity to yard jockey and go home every day and 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 be off for the weekend, I think I would stay with that. <laughs> you know, I don't think I want to go back over the road if if I'm working local. I mean, that's that's the goal and don't let nobody ever tell you that Yo, you got to go over the road before you can go local. No, that's not the case. You can always find a local job if you put the work in to find it. All right. Uh, over the road, flatbed. Uh, I'm not a flatbedder, bro. But if flatbed is what you want uh, and you feel that prime is 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 not giving you a chance look at other companies there's companies out here that will give you a second chance you just have to you just have to put in the work to look for it man that's all you just have to put in the work to look for it alex he says my license suspended i'm at a weight station in kentucky and i stay in alabama they told me i couldn't leave until i get until I get them straight or someone with a CDL can come and get me. What would y'all do? And what would they do if I leave? Well, I'm about to answer that question first, bro. If you try to leave with the truck and your license is suspended, that's a guarantee. <laughs> that's a guarantee trip to jail, bro. And of course, if your company knows that your license is suspended, then that means you're up, op you're operating an unauthorized vehicle. So, you you automatically about to go to jail. Uh, to answer your second question, what would you do? I will tell you. I I, I would get my license together, or at least I would I would at least got them together uh, from the giddy up. You just gonna have to call, uh, make arrangements, I guess, to get back to your home state and get that taken care of. Hopefully, once you get it taken care of, you still <laughs> you still driving for that company. So that's what I would do, and that's what I would not do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would not try to take the truck and 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 try to leave because if you had a weight station, I'm sure they'll they'll put that in the book. So if you decide to leave at night or in the morning, they're gonna put an APB out on you, bro. I hope you got it taken care of because this question, this question was back in February 2nd. So hopefully, hopefully you got it done. Uh, Benton. Hi, everyone. I'm finally headed out to the to I mean, headed out for the first time later this week and wanted to ask if anyone, anyone has any anything they can recommend I buy or bring with me. 
I got my CDL a few months back, and after training with my company, Snyder, I am heading out. But I don't want to be... Uh, I don't want to be OTR and realize I forgot something. What are some truckers' necessities? Um, the essentials, bruh. Your phone, tablet, maybe uh, maybe a personal, small personal computer, uh, a GPS, uh, your bedding, uh, uh, your, uh, your hygiene products, a uh, change of clothes. Uh, medicine, if you have it, uh, writing utensils, some, some office supplies, uh, what I said, I, I said your phone, right? You, you should always have your phone. Um, what else? Um, I guess for right now, for what you need to get started. Oh, um, clothes for the weather. You know, maybe some boots. Um, definitely a, a thermal for your bed, you know, for your bedding. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that's about it. What I can, what I can think of. I mean, you know, I brought. Um, if you're going out by yourself now, you know, the whole truck is yours. So all the storage in there, you can put whatever you want in there. But um, but once you, you know, get out here and get your foot wet and all like that then maybe you can get yourself a tv uh a microwave and stuff like that you know <clears throat> but as of right now just the essentials your clothes your your phone uh like i said tablet or pc um something to keep in contact with your peoples and something that you can make sure you can keep in contact with the uh with the company all right, Chris made this uh, made this comment, and I think this is this don't even need an answer for. But it says a successful business person plans ahead and and it's organized. Your business should be minimum to four bank accounts: one, a working account, a bank, a checking account where you, I mean, where your pay is deposited. That's point one. Point two is a tax account, a savings account where you can transfer 25 to 35 percent of your gross before everything else get paid. So that one account that you have that all your money going into, you take 25 percent of that and you transfer it into this other account. Number three, a personal account. A checking account where you can pay yourself a fixed salary every week to cover your home and travel expenses, which is that's good because you don't want to have you don't want to have all that money missed in and for a savings account. This is where you most where most of your weekly profits will go. If you fail or are unable to put money aside, then you will go out of business, of course. All the money once you transfer your once you transfer your payment like a hundred, two hundred dollars, you figure out what you can actually live on a week. Some some owner operators could live on a hundred dollars. Some owner operators need five hundred dollars. But whatever the case, whatever money is left over, like let's say a thousand, uh, nine hundred, three hundred, or whatever, that goes into your savings as profit period and that's that's the money that you don't want to touch that's the out of sight out of mind money right there if you're not making a profit and savings you will fail no you should have enough money in your working account that is where the money is being deposited you should have a uh, in your working account left over to pay the balance of your salary whenever you go home for a few days meaning like if you still got a truck payment or something like that, there should still be something in your working account that that will take care of that while you're off. You should not commingle. You should not commingle your money. If you don't break, if you don't break out your money into separate uh, entities, you will have no idea what your business is doing. Keep keep reading posts why guys are broke. It takes mentality discipline to be successful yes it does it does take it does take that discipline once you figure out 
what you want to do, how you want to do it, get that plan, get that savings, get those four banks, which I'm going to do. When I go home next week, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got two accounts right now. I'm going to get two more and I'm going to, and I am going to start this year to see where I'm at at the end of the year and see if this actually works out for me. I, I'm, I'm going to like this, but that's more so for owner operators and not uh, company drivers. But, but if you're a company driver that has a goal of, of, you know, get in the business other than trucking, then that's still a good plan to follow. Christian says, what companies hire drivers with terminations on their DAT reports for safety reasons? Incidents. I know, I know it's a few, but want to talk to, want to talk to all of them. See what they have to offer before I go to Western Express. Um, good care. Good question, bro. Uh, a lot of companies are not uh, hiring drivers for safety reasons anymore. It depends on the incident. Um, if this was a major accident with a fatality, then of course you can you can scratch all that. But if it's a major accident and it wasn't your fault that you was involved in, and you can explain it with proof, then go you know go for that. Go for that. Uh, colony, I think. So I have a question to my older drivers and owner operators. Is it beneficial to become an owner operator? I see the money my truck makes every week working for the company, and I feel like I'm being cheated. I am worth way more than I'm paid, and I am to the point of either doing it myself or leaving trucking. What's, what are your thoughts or experiences? I seen, I see what the company makes all the time. I mean, you know, my fleet manager kind of like hints me on what my truck actually makes. Now, do I feel like that he's cheating me or something like that? No, no, because the company goal is to make money, all right? And where their profit margin is at. So... If paying you fifty cent a mile is what they is is what they gonna is what they gonna pay you, then that's what they're gonna pay you, regardless of how much the truck makes. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you feel like you're being cheated, and and, and some of us are, you know, some of us are being cheated one way or another, then of course you gotta do what you gotta do, but don't just jump into owner operating. Don't believe what all these owner operators say. They'll come and tell you, yeah, jump into owner operating. You can do this. You can do that. But what they're not telling you is, is behind the curtain. What they're going through to be an owner operator. What happened when those tires blow? What happened when that engine blow? What happens when... That warranty runs out. Where's the money? Especially, and this goes out to you lease drivers that's leasing on with a company. Now, they will tell you the same thing. Oh, don't worry about it. We got you. We got you. But if anything happens to that truck and you can't afford to take care of it, trust me, the company is going to get their end out of the back end. So if your truck breaks down and, and you say, hey, I don't have the money right now oh, okay well we'll take care of it we get you back on the road but just know that we're going to take about four five hundred dollars out of your check every week to cover that think about that think about that before you jump into owner operation david says i was parked at j bros i'm i'm hip to j bros i i i think i parked there before in nebraska for a night watch a dude watch a dude drop his key when he was going into the store, he was white. I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought about it and said, if it was me, maybe, you know, maybe. So I picked it up and went inside the store. Me, excuse me, sir, him looking. What do you want? I can't give you a job. I don't have any change. 
Okay. Me looking, sad face. Looked around and then I walked away. I watched him look for his keys. I seen how I seen how he was pissed at the fact that he lost it. Roadside assistant showed up almost three hours later. I know, I know he had to pay a nice fee. The moral of the story is we are all linked out here by one way or another in this industry, at least. Being an asshole may cost you now, I mean, may cost you now or later. Uh, I wish I had a picture of the key. He actually, <coughs> he actually showed the key. Um, yeah, that's, it's kind of messed up that, that some of these drivers out here really have fucked up attitudes to the point that you, you know, you call yourself trying to try to help or try to say something nice or something like that. And he turns around and, and, and just this threw that at you like that. Um, yeah, me, I would, <laughs> I would have. A after after roadside assistance would have opened up the door for him i would have went back up in the up in the up in the uh up in the store i would have gave them the key and i would have told them to put it over the loudspeaker hey did any driver lose a key out here so i would stand there and wait until the guy come back in there and say hey i was the one that lost the key and then if that was me i would have stood there and was like you know, I, I found this key on the ground, sir. And then I, I I just wanted to stand there and see the look on his face. That that would have been me. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What do you guys feel about that stripper doing a GoFundMe uh that fell off the pole? <laughs> what do you guys think about that one? I think I got the video. Um you know, my internet is messed up, so I'm not going to show. I, I'll probably show the video in post. But what do you guys think about that? Um, she got a lawyer, and she said something about uh, that the company that she was dancing for is not going to cover her uh, expenses or anything like that. So the company was like, yo, you, you're you an independent contractor. You don't work for us. I mean, what you do on the dance floor is at your own risk. At your own risk? I mean, at your own risk? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> at your own risk, though, for real? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh, is she all right? <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't realize I had the video. Huh. I didn't realize I had that video. Let's let's see that shit again, man. Hold on. <laughs> let's see that again. Hold on. I got to I got to man, sorry about it. I keep hitting the wrong button. I think it's button 5. But look how she got back in that door and got right back into it. <laughs> she got right back into it like, it's okay. It's part of the routine. Just saying. Check out this picture. I know this picture popped up when, when um, this picture right here popped up. That's a gamer's life. Whoops. Hold on. Hold on. It just keeps going back. That's a gamer's life right there. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Let me see if I can bring it up without. Okay. That's a gamer's life right there, man. There we go. That's a gamer's life right here. <laughs> Look at all this right here. Don't this remind you guys of something? <laughs> that is nasty as fuck, though. For real. I mean, but this is a gamer's life. And this is what, this is what gamers do, man. They, they, they sit in front of their television and get it going. They get it going. And they, in, in order, they, they make money. They make money from that. That's why 
that's why they um that's why they you know that that's why they that's why they doing what they doing they make money from streaming all day 24 hours a day seven days a week and you know they keep all their 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 energy drinks their snacks all that shit right there and them just is just is 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 just part of the program It's just part of the program. Uh, let's see. Joshua says, I swear I hate this shit about trucking, and I blame ELDs. I've been up twice today, first by a security guard in the Flying J. Told me I could not park in the fire lane, so I leave and get on the ramp and go back to sleep. Now woken up by police saying that you can't park on the shoulder. Well, where the where the elf I'm supposed to go and park when my clock is out? It seems like all these truck stops are full. I just want uninterrupted sleep after running 14 hours. Uh, I'm just going to have to tell you this much. You're going to have to pre-plan. You're going to have to pre-plan and pre uh you're going to have to pre-plan and sometimes trip plan, man. You probably might going to have to take maybe about an hour to an hour and a half out before you even shut down. Don't run your entire 14-hour clock. Don't run your entire 11-hour clock. Take some time out of that clock to find somewhere to park. If the first if the first place is full, Ride down the way and see if the second place is full. Second place is full. Ride down the way and find until find until the end of that little block that you have for your clock runs, you know, runs out until you find somewhere to park. You can and will be able to find somewhere to park. I mean, I run up and down Texas all the time. I know for a fact that North 40 and the 101, the 101 truck stop always have truck parking there. You can always find truck parking. You can always find a mom and pops, maybe maybe uh, maybe a field or something like that. But you gotta you 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 gotta trip plan. You gotta you gotta plan your day. You gotta plan your time. You gotta figure out what you're gonna do, when you're gonna stop, how you're gonna stop, and where you're gonna stop. And I don't blame ELDs. I mean, I blame you, bruh. I mean, you the one that's running out your eleven hour clock all the way down to the to the millisecond without giving you some time to find adequate parking. You can find adequate parking. You just gotta find it. That's all. That's all. Uh Kevin. So I am at CSX Yard in Chambersburg, PA, and this fucker has pulled up at least 10 times to back his damn container. It amazes the hell out of me who can't back up. It amazes me too, bruh. It does. It amazes me to see that somebody is struggling and you over here complaining about it. Why don't you go out and help them? Help him get in there. If you've seen the guy pull up 10 times, at least go out there and see if you can help. I mean, come on, guys. You got a lot of new drivers out here that's 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 struggling. Give them a hand instead of instead of complaining about them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's all. I'm done. I got. Let's see. I got many more. Uh, oh, how about this one right here? Let me let me let me show you this right here. Let me see, is it five? Okay, this right here. What the hell is this, bruh? What is this? Who that supposed to be? Don't tell me an RIP right there. Who the hell is that, man? Don't tell me that's supposed to be Kobe. Man, come on, bruh. 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 One more time. Bruh. bruh. What the hell is this? That is. What is that? What is. Th... What is that? 
What is that supposed to be? Because that show ain't no tribute to no motherfucking Kobe Bryant. That at least that better not be. The finished product better not be that's a tribute to Kobe Bryant, bruh. You need to go and slap your tattoo art tattoo artist in the face. You need a refund. You need to go to a laser doctor and get that shit lasered off. What the fuck is that, bruh? Bruh. What is that? What is that? Somebody tell me what that is. I don't know. Leave it in the comments below. I'm about to get on up out of here. You guys take it easy. I'm about to get back up on this road. If you guys want to come and chop it up with me, hit me at lockoutmen at G, I mean lockoutmen podcast at G, gmail.com or hit me up in the DM, DM over at Instagram. Yo, I appreciate you guys staying on with me and we about to get on up out of here until the next video. You guys have a blessed one. Peace.